First opened in 2017. There's a look at the beautiful state-of-the-art Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta, GA. Today, we've got an NFC South matchup as it'll be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Atlanta Falcons. From the end zone, here's Devin Tompkins. And this return will net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Mayfield going to the air right away. Delivering a pass here to Evans on the out route. He'll wind up getting a yard on the game's first play at second down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. And this play going to be stopped in its tracks at the 32 and obviously well short of the first down. Only two yards and it'll be a punt on their opening possession. A fourth down. Here's Jay Camarda on to punt for the box. Back deep, Ray Ray McLeod. And he'll get credit for putting him inside the 20 as the fair catch is made right at about the 19-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it will be Falcon football. They begin the drive with Robinson. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. Off the play fake, Cousins. Hitting London, coming across the field. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Umpire threw the flag, usually always indicates holding, and that's what we've got. And you know, depending on their positioning, where you are on the field, the umpires get different responsibilities, but always, always making sure no one's holding. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And now a fumble. The ball's out. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. First down, here's White. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. Really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. Now second and nine. Throwing Mayfield. And this is caught by Evans. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 
Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Going right side is White. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. Here we go now on first and goal. Here's White. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Rashad White, a nine-yard touchdown run. And the Buccaneers use the early turnover to get on the board first here in this one. Some good running there at the end of the drive. He had the burst that set up the first and goal, and then one play later, he's in the end zone. Brandon, what I liked about that sequence is I'm not sure who made the play call, but they understood the situation, understood the momentum. A nice hard-charging run, give it right back to him and let him cap things off. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And he returns this to the 22. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons offense. They had the fumble on the last drive, wound up leading to the opening touchdown. Now they'll try again here, first and 10. On play action, Cousins. And complete to Drake London. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. A good pick up there, 21 yards. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. A give left side to Robinson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a gain of 11, and the Falcons pick up the first. And if his coaches are correct, we're going to see a lot more runs like that from this young rookie going forward. And you know, slapping each other on the back up in the boots right now? The scouting department, because they really recommended this guy highly, and he's justifying their faith in him. Back to Robinson now on first down. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. He'll lose a yard there and it's second and 11. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. On the counter, this is Robinson. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out. And the pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. And every game we talk about what are going to be the keys as we go into it. Maybe that's a key for their defense today. Pressure the quarterback and make sure you play a good zone defense behind them. And they get their first sack of the contest. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. 
They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. Now Mayfield. He's got his man. It's White. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now, and it's Buccaneer football. As they've got it with a first and ten. Here's Mayfield. And that's complete. It's Chris Godwin. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. And 24 yards the game there, another first down as well. Not only have they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? They run straight ahead here with White. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Nine yards on the play there, and it'll set him up first and goal. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. White. Fighting, but he won't get too far. Maybe a yard, that's all, down to the two. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. Good work there, holding him out on first down, and this is going to be a battle down here on the goal line. Can they hold their ground for two, maybe even three more plays? From the two now, second and goal. White. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Well, he finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete back. Three downs, stay on the field, run it, and catch it. And he gets it done. The extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And it's now 14 to nothing. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. Taken at the goal line. Fighting his way through contact. Now a hit and a loose football. He's past the 30. And it's picked up by the... And he returns it to the end zone. A fumble recovery touchdown for the Bucs. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. The Atlanta offense out there for their next drive. And they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive. 
but at the same time you're wondering how are we going to move the football what do we have on this play sheet that can work get back to basics is usually your answer and make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands yeah still second quarter you get points on the board here i think you're feeling okay he'll get this complete to rondale moore and he'll be taken down but not before he works it past the 50. First time they've hooked up here. Good for 17 and a first down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They've got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Again, it's Cousins. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. On third and 10, they go flying past the marker and get nearly 40 yards. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. His pass caught at the four. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And that will bring up second down. Robinson toss play left side. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped him. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. And they'll let their fullback try and push the pile. And this is not going to be enough. Was in search of two yards and only got halfway there. Let's give credit to the defense. They got plenty of bodies to the point of attack and stuffed the run. But I just wonder if the offensive line let down a little bit, knowing that the big guy was getting the ball, and it's expected him to pick up a first. Koo knocks this one through the post. So a conservative decision there, but it does put him on the board. And I know the players hate it and the coaches hate it, but sometimes you just got to take the points when they're there. Sometimes a field goal is pretty darn good. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. So out come the Bucks now. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. 
And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. I'm darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Mayfield looks to throw. And that's incomplete. Well, they approached this drive with a lot of confidence after the last one ended up as a touchdown. But incompletions on their first two throws has them huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get their momentum going again. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Mayfield. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. That might be the third down stop that they needed because they've had a lot of trouble slowing down this offense in the first half. This might be their opportunity to get off the field. Fourth down, so Jake Camarda is out there. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. McLeod to return it. Escapes the defender. First down, here's Cousins. And down he goes, a bucket air sack. Vita Vea forced his way through, drops him for a loss of 10 yards. Boy, that's tough, Charles. First play of the drive, you're hoping to stay ahead of schedule. You take that huge sack, and now you're facing second and a mile. And the entire time, you were probably thinking the same thing I was. Either get rid of the ball safely, of course, and pressure coming, and they got him once again. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. So when you have good field position to start a drive and you give up back-to-back -back sacks, that can be demoralizing for a team. So certainly in a pickle here, they have a mile to go to try to pick up the first. We'll see what they've drawn up. And right side, they're going to go option here. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. A 45-yard punt, four there on the return, and the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Well, the Bucs going to take over now late in this first half, and with a 14-3 advantage already, we'll see how much they want to try to push things, if at all. Just over 30 seconds to go in the half. They've got it first and 10. Mayfield to throw it. Over the middle, it's complete. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Mayfield now. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Second down and three. to throw Mayfield 
And that is incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. They'll try to pick this up on the ground with White. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. Jake Camarda sent on now to punt this away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Here's McLeod on the return. It'll be a 40-yard punt, eight on the return, and there'll be time for maybe one final play before halftime. And the Falcons going to get one more drive here in this first half. And with five seconds to go, this will likely be our final play. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Buccaneers out on top. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. And he won't quite make it to the 25. So we get set to start this third quarter. Here's the Falcons offense now. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively. Virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. and They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. A second down throw for Cousins. Got a man. It's London. And he's going to be taken down. Plus, there's a penalty flag in the backfield. They may get 15 more on top of this. So now a fresh set of downs. First and 10 after roughing the passer. To throw is Cousins. And oh, that nearly their first pick of the game, but it falls down to the ground incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Now Cousins. Short throw caught by Pitts. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else. And now it's third and ten. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team, but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large-body tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want him to catch the football first. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And that's well executed there on third down, and I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. 
On first and 10, it's Robinson. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they're able to just roam and hit. And they run the option on second down and stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people are worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Again, it'll be Robinson. And he gets in. Touchdown, Atlanta. B. John Robinson. A five-yard touchdown run. And the Falcons are back within a score. No touchdowns for them in the first half, but their defense kept them in this ball game. So now, maybe this can loosen them up a little because they played tight so far, and they get right back in it with a touchdown run. And he's got it. So the try for two successful. And with it, they're back within a field goal. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. And maybe some renewed pressure on this unit following the touchdown a moment ago. It's back to a one-score game. And because of that pressure, because it's now a one-score game, they know this is where you need to slow the momentum change because otherwise that could overrun your team. You've got to be careful right here. And this is going to be a Bucks first down as he's got this up to about the 34-yard line. Well, how many times do we say in this game is speed kills and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you've got a back who's quick and shifty can make moves make people miss but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down that's some of the benefits of that speed not just outrunning people in the secondary and that led to a really nice game a throw there but that's going to wind up incomplete trying to get their tight end involved finally that's the first time that they've looked his way he's kind of been a forgotten man in this offensive scheme yeah it didn't look his way at all in the first half and I'll bet you the offense coordinator made a note at the half and said let's get him involved because he could be a big time playmaker for us on second down they'll run with white and he'll be taken down but not before they work it across midfield 78 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. First down, Mayfield. And this nearly an interception, but it's incomplete. Well, a turnover really would have helped him there, but not to be. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, 
With his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. A good action to this point in the third quarter. Just a three-point game. Second and ten. Working out of the gun. Mayfield. And his throw is going to be incomplete. That incompletion certainly makes this upcoming third down a little bit more crucial. They need to find the right play to convert here and maybe start to tamp down a little bit of the momentum. The other side is starting to gain. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. He'll look to throw. And it's knocked away and incomplete. <laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he's on to kick it away. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. Here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field. Yeah, they've clawed their way back into this game. First half, they were down pretty big. Now, all of a sudden, we've got a ball game. How have they done it? First thing is what you just talked about, clawing their way back in. That means they've decided to go ahead and fight this thing out, which is great. The second part is they looked at where the problems were in the first half, figured out how to shore them up, and have now gone to that part of the playbook that is actually working. And now off to the races, down the right side. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. Yeah, big play there. And when you have a running back that you can use like a wide receiver, when he has that kind of versatility, you do as they did there. Get him out of the backfield and give those defensive backs something else to worry about. Hand off to Robinson out of the shotgun. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. I think we all suspected that they were going back to him after he found the end zone on his last carry. And they kept the positive momentum going there. Another nice run by him. From the 38 now, here's a second and five. And right side, they're going to go option here. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. Boy, the pursuit there, terrific from the linebacking core. Oh, it certainly was, because so many times on an option play, you'll see a linebacker make a beeline for the quarterback and then zip, one cut, and he's grasping it air. But this time, he locked in on him the whole way, took an excellent angle, and his grasp came up with the quarterback. And a good job on the tackle there as they get him down shy of the first on the 35-yard stripe. If this were baseball, we'd call this small ball. Instead of pushing it downfield, they throw a short pass trying to pick up the first down, but the defense rallies to the football and stops him short, bringing up a fourth down. Koo knocks this one through the post, and that will tie our score at 14. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted, but I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yep. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Mm -hmm. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. The Tampa Bay offense set to go again. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with a putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. 
So five yards here, five on the play, and it's second down. Nice play call, a little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. Ball on the 30, they'll come up with a second and five. They'll go up the middle with White. And he'll fight for a couple as the tackle is made at about the 32. And we'll pause here for an injury. I believe that's a running back. Yeah, that's Rashad White who's shaken up. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury. And we'll be back in a moment. Now this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Third and short yardage, Mayfield. Able to find the open man, that's complete. And he is gonna have the Buccaneers first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. Three quarters have come and gone. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Atlanta. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. All square, 14 apiece to score as we get ready for the fourth quarter. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Nice satisfying run on first down for the offense, picking up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. Throwing Mayfield. And a catch right side by Evans. And Evans will have a Bucks first down as he's across midfield to the 48. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Mayfield's throw taken in by Evans here. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. They go right back to him for 20 and a first. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars. And he came through with a nice catch right there. Mayfield off the play fake. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. It sort of looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But if this defense gets two more stops, they can keep them out of that area. Second and 10 now from the 27. And again, it's Mayfield. Throwing middle, and it's complete. Five yards, now it's third and five. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. And a nice stiff arm, it opens room to run. Yeah, great effort there to shed the contact, and it helps him pick up the first. So that run play nullified by the holding call on the tight end. Yeah, I just think he needs to get off the ball a lot quicker and get into the block a little bit more effectively. Then he doesn't have to reach and grab and try and hold on. A field goal try would be almost 50 yards from this spot. So what can they do to get closer now on third down? Now Mayfield. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 13-yard line. Boy, a nice play there as they wind up converting on third and 15. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going, and right now it's paying off with big chunks of yardage as shown by that last play. Now a give up the middle. This is White. And strong running there as he's inside the 10 and down to the 8-yard line. 
Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Second and five from the eight. They stay on the ground with White. And they'll get this from the eight to the five. Pick up a three. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. So they need two yards here on third down. Remember, they're already two of two on third down conversions on this drive. Here's Mayfield. And Evans hauls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. A five-yard touchdown catch. And the Buccaneers have broken this deadlock and have taken the lead here in the fourth. So still time remaining here in this fourth quarter, but the touchdown there puts them back out in front. And you and I both know that their defense will not very subtly remind everyone that they started all of this because they held firm on the last drive and only gave up a field goal. Gave it back to the offense in a tie game and said, okay, your turn now. Make something happen. And they went down the field and scored. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. Ray Ray McLeod to return. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. They now trail by seven after that last touchdown here in the fourth quarter. What a big spot for this offense. See if they can cobble something together on this drive. On first and 10, Cousins. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. This is certainly a team that has proven it likes to target its backs through the air and defensively. They were aware of that and certainly were prepared on that throw. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Robinson, he'll try the left side. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. This offense so far on third down, they've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and seven. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now Cousins. Going up top. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. We've seen that the deep ball's been a part of their game plan all afternoon, but they've had trouble hooking up on it, unable to successfully find the end zone over the top. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Throwing Cousins. And his throw's going to be incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Cousins again. That's out wide here for Robinson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 
Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. Cousins now to throw on first down. Over the middle, caught by London. And he's got this down to the 35. Nice, well coached, a team that understands what's going on. They still have time to work the middle of the field as they just did there. Plenty of time, all three timeouts still remain. Here's first and 10 now. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. I think the best offenses love to get the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss. And they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. Well, we saw him shed a nice tackle on that play. Cousins throw into the hands of Pitts here. And Pitts is going to pick up a Falcons first down as he'll be brought down just outside the red zone. Mark him at the 21. I'm starting to wonder here, are they trying to prevent winning? Because right now, they're laying back and they're picking them apart, moving the ball downfield. I think they got to start bringing a little pressure towards the quarterback. Here's Cousins. And that'll be incomplete. Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion, so I think both sides are going to savor every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a non-stop push to finish this drive off. Everyone better be on the same page right now, because I think they're going to try and get several plays off in quick succession if they can. Now Cousins. And his throw is incomplete. Back-to-back -back incompletions, but we know this is definitely four-down territory. Time not on their side. I don't think they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they've got to go and get it right here, right now. And now a tough spot here. This is third and ten. Cousins. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he is going to get out of bounds with the first down. So that's going to double their pleasure for sure. They get the first and save a timeout. That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. Cousins to throw. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. Whew, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Here now, second and goal. He'll look to throw toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his huddle. Got to totally command it, make sure all eyes are on him. All focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. They'll look to throw. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Partner, they've got one chance left to keep this one going, and I think for you and me, Let's think along with their offensive coordinator now. Has to think back, cycle through every play of this contest, and remember what's worked and what has it. Because right here, he needs the best play of the game in order to keep this one alive. Desperation time. Cousins on fourth down. And it's caught. It's a touchdown. So they rally here in the final minute, and they're an extra point away from tying this game. And while it appears the heavy lifting was accomplished by scoring the touchdown, they're still down one. That extra point is not a gimme. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter.
This one, all we could have asked for. All tied, final minute as it kicks away here. Well, now how about this return? He's to midfield. Still going past the 30. And he's going to take it all the way into the end zone. What a return. And they've taken the lead. This game wasn't tied for long. How about that? A big return here in the fourth. And this is that time of game where every big play is magnified. Fourth quarter, kick return for a touchdown. You've got to feel great about your chances at this stage of the game. Yeah, they regain the lead. Now we'll see if they can hold it. So let's try this again. After the kick return TD, here's yet another kickoff. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. So Kirk Cousins in the offense. Down 28-21, 23 seconds to go. They need a touchdown to the PAT to tie it as they come up first and 10. He's back to throw. That's caught by Pitts. Able to get out across the 40-yard line, so a spectacular play to begin this drive. Atlanta now coming out on the field. So remember, Charles, last time they were out here, they scored, but they just saw the opposition score, and they're trailing right now, so they're trying to keep pace here. They need a touchdown drive. Well, if you're a fan of offense, you're loving this, but if you're a fan of defense, this is tough to watch, and it's also tough to keep that up when you've just watched your opponent march down the field on a scoring drive that lasts into double-digit snaps. You need a score here not just to follow the momentum from your last drive, but put the onus back on your opponent. And that's what they're doing right now, swapping that onus back and forth. A couple extra defensive backs out there in the dime, and because of that, really not many places to throw the football, if any. And typically, what would you want to do against that dime? Run the football. You want to run the ball, but you can't do it in this situation. Not nearly enough time on the clock. You having to really navigate against a tough defense presented against you. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. And now the focus is really clear. They need to get that first down and either get out of bounds or maybe use one of those timeouts. This definitely four down territory at this point, but a critical third down here. Back to throw. And this is caught on the sideline. Are the feet in? They are. What a catch. They absolutely had to take some chances downfield trailing here in the fourth quarter. So why not go four verticals, send the guys downfield, say make a play? And that's one of the favored routes of offensive coordinators. You know why? Because receivers can be open at any point running that route. One last shot now for Cousins. And oh, that one nearly intercepted. That would have sealed it. Instead, it'll be second down. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I'll guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. One final shot. They'll look to throw. This is caught, and he doesn't quite make it, taking it within an eyelash. Dropped at the one. This one came right down to the wire, and CD, they had that one final chance to try to navigate their way into the end zone, but couldn't get it done to avoid the loss. Yeah, and how about the defense there? Because while they had one final look at the end zone, 
The defense made sure they knew what they were doing on the last play, executed it flawlessly, and no flags. Because remember, if there's a defensive penalty, there's one play left in the game that the offense gets. They didn't allow that to happen. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon.